of our last lecture, we showed that arc exists. I didn't show it, but the Google show it. And the question now turns out like, what are the usefulness we can discover about the least upper bound property while being an ordered field? Like, what's the point of defining R with the least upper bound property and being an ordered field? In fact, with the properties we can have the so-called Archimedean property and also the fact that Q is dense in R. So one is the Archimedean property and two is so-called Q is dense in R. So, so theorem one, the first part, it states that for any x, y being real numbers and x is greater than zero, then there exists positive integer n such that nx is greater than y. So let's prove the Let's prove the first part of the theorem first. Suppose we want to we want to show it. We're going to prove it using contradiction. So, suppose for a contradiction. We want to show it for contradiction. First, we'll consider this set. Consider this set. set of all nx's. So if we assume the contradiction, then it means that for any number in A, for all nx's, we have nx are less than or equal to y. So there doesn't exist in such that nx is greater than y. So all the nx's are less than or equal to y, which is the negation of the statement, right? Okay. So, we know that A is non-empty since N belongs to the positive integers, so like 1x, 2x are in the set, so A is not empty. And also Nx is less than or equal to Y for all Nx and A. Well, since, since uh, A is a subset of real numbers, then A has a uh, least upper bound, call it alpha. Exists in R. And then now since X is positive, positive real, so X is greater than zero, we have negative X is less than zero. And then we add alpha on both sides right then by the definition of least upper bound we know that alpha minus x is not upper bound of a which means that there exists positive integer m such that uh, mx is greater than alpha minus x and now we move x to the other side. We have m of x plus one is greater than alpha. <coughs> Oops, wait. Is m x plus x greater than alpha? So is x of m plus one greater than alpha? which means that alpha is not a upper bound of A. What, which is a contradiction, right? So first part is proven. And the second part of the theorem says that there exists a rational between any two reals any two reals that satisfy this relation, which is Q is dense in R. You can always find a rational between any two real numbers, any two different real numbers. <coughs> so the proof of two. Since X is less than Y, so y minus x is less, x greater than zero. 
and then we apply a we up oh no we apply the first part of theory we apply one what is one states it states that for any two real numbers with x greater than zero let y minus x be the be the x from a and let uh let y let one be the y from a uh, from one from part one from part one from part one then we know that there exists a positive integer n such that n times y minus x is greater than one so this is the x this is the y this is the n that exists by 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 part one <clears throat> and now we apply a again so now i apply apply one again we uh let so there exists m1 m2 such that 1 times m1 greater than nx 1 times m2 greater than negative nx so this is the n the m1 and 2 are the n's m1 is the x minus the x and nx is the y would mean which means that there exists n1 and m2 positive integers such that m1 greater than nx m2 greater than negative nx Now we consider the set A be the all integers such that nx was less than m less than or equal to m1. So it's like you have nx and you have m1 here. You let n be all the integers between them. They're all the m's. Okay, take a look at this definition of this set. Oh, I need more space. I need more space, so... Uh, uh, we'll just prove, let's just prove the part A and B, part one and two first, and I'll prove the next theorem next time okay so <clears throat> a is finite that's obvious right a is of course finite you cannot be greater than m1 so it's finite and also should be greater than nx well it's of course finite and it's not empty because m1 because m1 is greater than nx m1 is greater than nx right so it's not empty finite not empty then a has the smallest element let m be the smallest element the least element in a then we have m minus 1 is less than or equal to nx because if m minus 1 because m minus 1 is not an a because uh, so we have nx 
if m m minus one is an n a, then we should have this inequality being true. If this is false, then we have n x less than m minus one is false. Right? Because m minus one is not an a anymore since m is the least element, so m minus one is not an a. So you have this inequality is false. So this inequality is false. And the negation of this inequality is mx greater than or equal to m minus one, which is here, right? And then we have m minus one less than or equal to nx is greater than m since m is an a. m is an a, right? m is an a. Now we have nx less than n, less than or equal to nx plus one, less than ny. <coughs> so nx less than n is right here. m minus one is less than or equal to nx, and you add one on both sides, you have this. And nx plus 1 is less than ny since n of y minus x is greater than 1. And you just op like open out the parentheses and you have the desired inequality right here. You might ask why n n times n times y minus x is greater than one because and y minus x because before we showed that there exists n such that it's right here so you have to desire inequality here and now we have n x less than n less than n y divide by n on both sides we have x. Now, m is an a, so it's an integer. n is positive integer, which is also integer. So m and n is in q, and the statement is proven.